We're so thankful tonight for the songs of worship that we've been able to offer up to the Lord. And um, it just feels right to change our order of service now and, and look to the preaching of the gospel. And um, I want to say to those that are lost here tonight, um, don't get caught up in the amount of people that are here. Um, we want you to be saved. And that the Lord is drawing your heart to seek after him. Be it up here towards the front, we can move chairs and we can get people out of the way. Um, if it's in your seat, um, if it's back in the fellowship hall, you need to get away and pray. If um, We want you to seek the Lord if that's what you feel inclined to do. And so, Brother Monty Shoulders is a member of Buffalo Springs Missionary Baptist Church. Uh, he's been doing mission work in Belize for a number of years now. And... Um, there's a number of people that have followed him down there and are trying to continue to plant seeds for some of the fields that the Lord has allowed him to plow. And so we look forward to hearing him tonight. And let's be prayerful that the Lord would help him this night as he brings the message to us. And so with that, Brother Monty, I'm going to ask you to come and deliver what the Lord's placed on your heart. What a family. So glad to be a part of this family. All day today, my brethren have come to me and said, I'm praying for you. I want you to know that means something to me. Amen. It means a lot to me. I appreciate your prayers. And um, God is good. And all the time, God is good. We... Um, I feel like doing this right now. How many of you here, would you stand up if you've been to Belize? I'm not talking about on a cruise ship. I'm talking about the mission trip. Would you stand up? And there's... Thank you. And there's many more that aren't here that have come down and helped in the work in Belize. But many of you would... I've heard many of you that went to Belize that come back and said, you know, I thought I was going down to help them, but they helped me. Amen. They're a blessing. The people there are a blessing. I have a message on my heart tonight, and I want to get to that right away. Maybe I'll talk about Belize. I, I feel... Like people expect me to talk about Belize, but sometimes I just need to preach. Amen. And so you forgive me if I don't tell you everything about Belize. If you want to know, I'll be glad to talk to you and you can see the, 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 uh, the updates that we give and we, we mail out. Do you want to be on that mailing list? You let us know. We'd love for you to keep up to date on what's going on in Belize. I got a few verses of scripture I'd like to read tonight. 2 Corinthians chapter 4. <clears throat> Starting with the first verse. 2 Corinthians chapter 4. Starting in the first verse. Telling somebody where you're getting ready to read is like the song leader telling what page it is. And no matter how many times you say it, someone says, what page? I told this the other night, but I'll tell it again because it's the truth. I've told them in Belize, I've learned to slow down to tell them where the scripture is. I want them to follow along. Amen. I want them to see that what I'm teaching, what I'm preaching is backed up by the word of God. Amen. And they, they love doing it. They'll, I'll keep talking or stalling until I stop hearing the pages turn. And I encourage them to bring their Bibles and they do. And uh, so tonight, where was I at? <laughs> Second Corinthians chapter 4, verse 1. Therefore, seeing we have this ministry, as we have received mercy, we faint not, but have renounced the hidden things of dishonesty, not walking in craftiness, nor handling the word of God deceitfully, 
but by manifestation of the truth, commending ourselves to every man's conscience in the sight of God. But if our gospel be hid, it is hid to them that are lost, in whom the God of this world hath blinded the minds of them which believe not, lest the light of the glorious gospel of Christ, who is the image of God, should shine unto them. For we preach not ourselves, but Christ Jesus, the Lord, and ourselves, your servants, for Jesus' sake. For God, who commanded the light to shine out of darkness, hath shined in our hearts to give the light of the knowledge of the glory of God in the face of Jesus Christ. But we have this treasure in earthen vessels that the excellency of the power may be of God and not of us. Amen. This is the reading that was on my heart when they, uh, I was totally unprepared and unexpected for me to be here standing here tonight. But as soon as they voted for me to do that, I thought, Lord, what am I going to preach? And the Lord brought this scripture that fast. To my heart. Now, Brother Brad was looking at me and he went and told everybody that I didn't have any reaction at all. See, they think that my face is always the same and I, they don't know when I'm happy or when I'm sad or when I'm. But that was my terrified look, Brother Brad. <laughs> it looks the same as my happy look. But I want to look at these scriptures, and for us to understand them, I believe we need to look into the Word of God a little further and figure out, because he talks about shining a light, and he talks about the glory, the, the, the light of the knowledge of the glory in the face of Jesus. And I want to look and think upon some of the scriptures in the Bible about light. You know, light and glory just kind of go together in the scriptures, doesn't it? When they talk about glory, they're talking about a great light. And we find the first mention of light is in the creation. In the beginning, God said, let there be light, and there was light. And, and you know, that was before the sun and before the moon. The Bible tells us in John 8 and 12 that Jesus is the light. Jesus was there. When the world was being made Amen. and spoke into existence. But we go to and want to think about next Moses. He went up on the mountain and he asked the Lord a question. He said, show me thy glory. And God told him, he said, I'll show you, but I'm going to have to pass by. And you're just going to see my back part because you can't see the full effect of my glory, my splendor, it would kill him. That, that's how amazing that God is. But you remember he, he passed by like that and Moses come down off that mountain. And if you back up in the third chapter here that, that, in, that I'm not gonna take time to read, He's talking about when he come down off the mountain, his face did shine. What was it shining with? The glory of God. He had seen the glory of God. And his face did shine. It said that they were frightened. They were afraid because his face did shine. And he put a veil over his face. And he began to... Uh, you know, tell them what the Lord had told him up there. But there's a, a, a veil that talks about in the third chapter, there's a veil on the heart. But I'm telling you, Jesus can take that veil off the heart. Make himself known. So the glory that Moses saw, the glory of God, we find another account in the New Testament, in Matthew chapter 17, we find that he took Peter, James, and John up into a high mountain. And he began to, I believe what he did was peel back his flesh and show God. 
And it, it says there that his face did shine as the sun. His glory exuded from his face and was shining out and they were afraid and they fell down. But when Jesus told them it's okay and he reassured them and, and they saw Elias and Moses and you know what they said? It's good for us to be here. Amen. Amen. Where the glory of God is, it's good for us to be there, isn't it? And they went and they, they wanted to make a memorial. God didn't, Jesus didn't want to do that. But we find that the face of God, I don't believe, the, the Bible in one place says that you can't, we can't look upon his face. His glory, his splendor is so great that we cannot look upon him. We can't take the full effect of glory. But we find that the, the Bible says that in Matthew 24 and 30, it says that they shall see the Son of Man coming in the clouds of heaven with power and great glory. Amen. What a scene that's going to be. Amen. The Bible tells us that in the book of, in the book of Revelations, that there's going to be this sixth seal released. And there's going to be uh, the kings of the earth and the great men and the rich men and the chief captains and the mighty men and the bondmen and every free man. They hid themselves in dens and in rocks and of the mountains and said to the mountains and rocks, fall on us and hide us from what? The face of him that sitteth on the throne and the wrath of the Lord. For the great day of his wrath is come, and who shall be able to stand? Brethren, I'll tell you who will be able to stand. Those that are washed in the blood of the Lamb. They'll stand, and we'll be able to look on him. We'll be changed. We'll have, a, we'll have new eyes. We'll be able to see him in the full effect. And friends, the Bible tells me uh, that he's going to light that city. His face is going to shine and his glory is going to be bright. There'll be no need for the sun or the moon. There'll be no night. Amen. Let's back up and let's read this scripture again that I read, 2 Corinthians 4 and 6. For God who commanded the light to shine out of darkness has shined in our hearts to give the light of the knowledge of the glory of God in the face of Jesus Christ. Amen. Do you see that connection? The Bible teaches that this light and this glory that comes from Jesus, and the Bible talks about his brightness and he's the express image. He's the exact image of God. He is God. Amen. And his brightness, friends, uh, he's coming back one day and he's, gonna, he's coming in power and glory. But friends, listen, I'm glad that the day that I got saved, he shined glory in my soul. Amen. We talk about, uh, I believe it was uh, Brother Miller that talked about, we, his message was on joy. And how when the joy of the Lord comes in your heart, it moves you, doesn't it? Amen. But I'm telling you, you know what comes in my heart first? Joy and glory are cousins. Glory came in and listen, Brother Reynolds, heaven came down and glory filled my soul. Amen. Brother Reynolds requested that song one night when I was here and said, that's exactly what happened to me. Can you identify with that? Amen. Brother in heaven came down and glory filled my soul. That light shined in that dark place and I've never been the same since. Amen. Joy unspeakable and full of what? Glory. glory. I'm glad for God's glory. Yeah. We sing a song, oh, the glory did roll. 
I was happy and free. The Lord spoke sweet peace to me. Such a wonderful joy that I was given within. My Savior in love saved me from all sin. Aren't you glad for the glory of God and you can know you're saved? (laughs) The scripture says that the church is the light of the world. Jesus said, I am the light. How can that be? Well, listen, Jesus is the head of the church. And all we are is reflectors. We put our light on the candlestick and we got all these uh, candles. uh, It's not our light, it's Jesus is the light. And we can reflect that light. But I'm telling you, when we exalt God in our heart, and we uh, get in tune with the S-O-N. You know, you magnify, if you get the S-O-S-U-N and you take a magnifying glass and you get it positioned just right, friends, it'll, uh, it'll start a fire. And I'm telling you, when we get in tune and in line uh, with the S-O-N and we magnify his name, uh, friends, the glory will roll. And I'm telling you, when God's glory gets in the house, uh, friends, it'll, uh, it'll convict lost people. Uh, friends, we could preach and beg them to come all you want to. Uh, what we need to do is worship God, and it'll convict them. Friends, before this uh, practice of calling them up to an anxious seat, uh, friends, people just fell all over the house. John Waller ran out into the woods, and you know what he said? He said, I went out there, and I fell on my knees and began to get, beg God for mercy. And this sweet, I felt this sweet application of the love of God. (laughs) I'm telling you what, when God's people get in tune, and I'm telling you, uh, there's a fire that's kindled in Zion. uh, When God's people come together uh, with love and, and loving one another and with the intention of holding him up as high as we can get him Amen. and we can get down just as low as we can, Amen. he can be exalted. Amen. People will desire that. Amen. Friends, the world needs that. Amen. You want an answer to the problems of it that exist in our nation? It's that, it's right there. If we want to see revival, get in tune with the S-O-N. Magnify him. There'll be a a fire kindled in Zion. There's a... (laughs) In Belize, there's a fire kindled. The Lord... Those of you that's been there have seen it. I'm telling you, there's a little village in the rainforest jungles of Belize. And there's this little brother, a hut. There's a hut that sits up on a hill that has a, has a grass roof, a thatch roof, open air. And when we first started, it was a dirt floor. Take that back, it was a mud floor. And those people and and the ones that were there, the preachers and the different ones that were there, we bowed with those lost people in that mud. And they didn't care, we didn't either. And I don't care, I still don't care this day. Friends, I'll waller in the mud with any one of you if it means you'll get safe. We, we have, a, we have a evangelism today that is teaching that people can just take God at his word. There's no feeling involved. Listen, I want to ask you a question. Do you believe that what, what the apostle Paul was writing there, that there's this light that shineth in your heart and there's this glory, but there was no feeling? Listen, I believe you can realize salvation. The Bible talks about that the love of God is shed abroad in our hearts by the Holy Ghost. 
You believe you can feel that? Yeah. I did. That sweet appellation, app, application of love that came into my heart when I got saved. The Bible talks about that the... He says, you hath he quickened or made alive who were dead in trespasses and sins. Did you know it when you come alive? There's people that have you to believe that you don't feel nothing, that you just take God at his word and there's no feeling involved. Listen, I believe God, we, we all, God works from the inside out, Amen. not the outside in. There's a lot of people teaching that how you uh, know that you're saved is that because you're working for the Lord. This is the new doctrine and reform movement, and it's dangerous, and it's corrupt, and it's deceitful. But it's so close to the truth. Many of our people think, oh, yeah, they believe just like us. No, they don't. They'll say, well, you, you can't tell people they're saved. They need to... Uh, they need God to tell them they're saved, and we'll share that all over the internet. Oh, look, they believe just like us, but you know what they're talking about? They're talking about, they're not talking about a feeling. They're not talking about an experimental knowledge. They're talking about because now you're living it. Listen, you can turn around in the road, and you're still on the broad road. Friends, you got, God's got to take you off of that road and put you on the narrow road. Amen. And only God can do that. Amen. Listen, there's a... In Belize, as we... Over time, we've seen people come to mind, Sister Dalila, Sister Marlene, and Sister Carolee. They're sisters. We call them the Big Falls girls. We love them like our own children. Amen. All these children, Amen. people at the mission or at the church now, we love them like our own. But I watched each one of them seek the Lord many times. They didn't get saved the first time they called upon the Lord. But they would call on the Lord and they would pray and they would cry out loud. And some of you... Uh, that's here got to see a few of them get saved. But it was amazing where they went from just weeping and wailing and crying and all of a sudden they was quiet. <laughs> Looked up to heaven. And Brother Ron was on one side and I was on the other. We didn't say a word. Listen, let them tell it. Amen. Don't go asking them or trying to uh, make them, you know, it's dangerous. Suggestive sales is dangerous. McDonald's has figured it out that it works, don't they? Would you like fries with that? Listen, I'm not going to ask them you like fries with it. I'm going to let them tell it. God doesn't save it. Listen, I, I seen one time there was a, a woman, a, a girl that was seeking the Lord in a revival meeting that I was in, and she was flat on her face calling on the Lord, and the next thing I know... She got up and kind of looked back at someone and smiled and headed to the bathroom. A lady got to shouting all over the house. She got saved. She got saved. The girl come out of the bathroom and she said, I just had to go to the bathroom. Yeah. Listen, we need to be careful. Amen. Wait on the Lord. Amen. It's worth the wait. Amen. It was worth the wait, Brother Ron, when that, when that girl looked up at us and she said, I just got saved. <laughs> the Lord just saved me. I remember uh, Sister Glenda, uh, she's Brother Mateo's wife. He's a deacon at the church that got ordained. Amen. And when he got saved in the first revival, Amen. and when he got saved, his wife came to me. They just had a new baby. And I baptized him and his daughter. Him and his daughter both got saved in that revival. And I, they both joined the church, and I baptized them. <clears throat> Sister Glenda come to me, and she said, Pastor Monty, she said, as soon as I get over this C-section that I had, I want to join the church. I said, okay, you know what we require? A conversion experience. And she, I said, do you have that? She said, oh, yeah. I said, okay. Left it alone, didn't say another word. 
She kept coming and coming, and one Sunday night, about six months later, she never joined the church. There's other people got saved, and we opened the doors of church. She never came forward. On a Sunday night, I was up preaching, and all of a sudden, here she come running. She had her, she had her towel with her. <laughs> She took her towel, she got down, and she started mourning and crying out to God. And it was in a different language. But friends, you could tell what she was doing. She was seeking salvation of her soul. Amen. She called out to God for probably an hour. This went on. And all of a sudden, she just stopped. She got up, and we got video of this. She ran around the, the pulpit, and I gave her the microphone and my... Alex was there at the time, and he started recording. And she started saying, I'm so free. I'm so free. Amen. Friends, where the Spirit of the Lord is, there's liberty. Amen. You want to be free. Uh, friends, like you've never been free before. Listen, we need to be free. Amen. In God's service, we need to feel free. Amen. Don't quench the Spirit. Listen, to, God can... Orchestrate a service. Amen. I'm not good at it. Amen. God's good at it. Amen. The sister Glenda joined the church. She has a real testimony now. She understood. She understands that glory. You know, I don't know about you, but there's people say, well, I don't really know what heaven's going to be like. I do. The Bible says, I have not seen and ear hath not heard, neither hath entered into the heart of man those things that God prepared for those that love him. And people stop right there. Right. You know what it says in the next verse? Yeah. But it's revealed unto us by his spirit. Amen. Listen, that bubbling up in my soul, that glimpse of glory that I got, one day I'm going to get the full effect of it Amen. when I stand in heaven, when Jesus comes to get us in power and glory. Uh, friends, I'm going to walk with him. I'm going to talk with him. I'm going to bow myself down to him and worship him forever Amen. the way he deserves to be worshiped. Amen. Here, I look through a glass darkly. But they're face to face. And you know that face, uh, how that people are going to be running and hiding. What are you going to be doing? If Jesus comes back tonight, you're going to run and hide from his face? Or are you going to be rejoicing? I'm going to be changed. If he comes back while I'm still living, I'm going to be changed in a moment, the twinkling of an eye. And I'm going to meet him in the air to be evermore. Amen. He went to prepare a place for us. His family, his children. Friends, I'm thankful tonight. I've got a heavenly home. I've got a better country to look forward to. And I'm homesick for it. But I want everyone to go with me. Listen, if you're not in the family of God, you have to be born into this family. Spiritually, you've got to be born again. And if, Lord, listen, if you're here tonight and you're not saved, you're not part of this family, we want you to be part of this family. Amen. Jesus wanted you to be so much part of his family uh, that he bought it with a price of his blood on Calvary. Amen. Amen. He wants all the earth to be saved. Amen. Friends, he made a way for everyone to be saved. It's a whosoever will. This nonsense going on about there's, he only died for the, for the elect. He died for every man. Amen. He takes to death for every man. Amen. Friends, it's a whosoever will. Come and take of the water of life freely. But I want you to know the gift of God is not just being hung out there for you to come and take like the evangelism is telling today. Amen. That gift is only given to those that come up through godly sorrow, Amen. broken before God. Amen. And friends, I'm telling you, you just try to get around the words and the scriptures and you want to say there's no feeling? What about sorrow? Amen. What about trouble? Amen. What about guilt? Amen. What about the pains of hell Amen. that got a hold of the psalmist? Amen. There's feeling in those words. Amen. There's feeling. Them, uh, them folks that got saved uh, when Jesus was here and got healed. Uh, friends, they cried out, uh, 
those that were blinded cried, cried out, have mercy on me, thou son of David. And they said, be quiet. And they yelled the louder, have mercy on me, thou son of David. You believe they were troubled? Amen. They didn't care who was watching or who was listening and who was telling them what. Amen. They wanted Jesus more than anything. Amen. Friends, we have ample examples all through the scriptures. There's feeling. Be afflicted. Weep and mourn. Humble yourself in the sight of the Lord and he will lift you up. You believe that? I do. He shined that glory in my soul that day that I got saved through the face of Jesus. I got a dose of God in my heart. One day... I'm going to see him face to face. I'm looking forward to that day. There's no sinner too bad that Jesus can't save. Sammy, Sammy C comes to mind. We got down there, Sammy C in revival meeting. Sammy's one of Lewis's sons. Sammy was in a gang, all tattooed up, gang tattoos. And they were going from Punta Gorda to Belize City. They'd come down. There was a gang in Belize City come to Punta Gorda and kill one of theirs. And they'd send send somebody up there to kill one of theirs. He was next on the list. He had a hit on his head. He was a drunkard, drug addict. He come to the meeting. He was he was crying, saying, "I'm scared to die. What do I do?" We started telling him what he needs to do. You need to call on the Lord. I said, "Sammy, you're going to die." You better get ready. He said, well, I've accepted Christ and I've done it. I said, but you don't, you're still scared to die. Listen, what I've got, I'm not scared to die. Amen. God secured me, gave me assurance. I know where I'm going when I die. Amen. He began to, to weep and we prayed with him and, and different brothers talked to him. And he went away. We didn't see him for a while. I was in service one night. Here he come. He looked all cleaned up and sober, and he sat down on the front row. I opened the doors of the church that night. This man came forward while I was standing there hearing this man's testimony. I get done. I turn around. He's standing on the other side of me. They, I said, Sammy, what, what's your intentions? He said, I want to join the church. I said, you understand what we require? He said, oh, yeah. He began to tell a testimony how he wrestled with the Lord for four days and four nights. Didn't sleep, didn't eat, calling on the Lord, how God gave him peace in his soul. He's now been called to preach. I'm telling you, God is a God of miracles. There ain't nothing too hard for him. We, friends, listen, we are such little faith. God wants to do so much, but we've got to be obedient we got to serve him. we got to worship him. we got to lift him up. we got to exalt his name. Exalt him. Magnify the Lord. It'll start a fire in Zion. Listen, people come down there and say, boy, I, I mean, I thought I told you at the, the, the missions conference, I thought everybody from America was going to join that day on the organization. They just started coming. Brother Jeff was standing behind me. And there was Brother Paul Patterson was telling his testimony and said he needed to join the church. And, and Brother Jeff stand behind me and he steps up and he says, I'm next. I said, I thought he had to say something or preach. I said, okay. So I gave way and he's telling, I got to join the church. The Lord sent help. Amen. We'd been praying for help. Amen. The Lord sent more help. Amen. We're still praying for help. There's a field white ready for the harvest there. You know why? Just my opinion from what I've seen, there's not any distractions there. Amen. Listen, we've let this country flow in with milk and honey. It's distracting us from what's important. It's distracting our children, Amen. our grandchildren. Down there, they don't have those, those distractions. We have six-hour services. 
And I had to get used to things. See, they're used to waiting on everything there. They don't have cars. They wait for an old school bus that's public transportation. They might wait hours and the bus just don't show. They just go back home and wait the next day. Hopefully it gets fixed and it'll come back again. They don't, they don't have television sets. They're not, you know, saying, well, I got to get home to watch my favorite show or the football game or whatever. They, they're not, they don't have all that baggage. And it's a great blessing. You get to service, you know, here at 12 o'clock, preachers, you better hurry up and get done. They're looking for lunch. They're looking for, America's got real short attention spans. Amen. We do. And, and I do. And, and I got there and, and I had these short attention spans and I didn't, I, I, I would worry because they would sing and sing and sing. And I'm thinking, boy, this is too long. And I'd try to hurry the process up and cut them off so I could preach and stuff. I finally just figured out, just sit back and let them sing. Amen. And they sang and they sang and they sang. And then I got up and preached and preached and preached. And they got up and rejoiced, rejoiced, rejoiced. And friends, it was good. It was, you just had to learn to be patient. Oh, we're going to stop them. Them kids want to learn a new song every week. And they do. We got four of them coming to Do Re Mi. They've given them scholarships to come to Do Re Mi. They got approved on their visas four young girls. The Leela, Mar uh, I mean, Marlene and Kara Lee sisters got to come, Wilda and uh, Rebecca, Rebecca, and they're all a blessing. Amen. Amen. They love the Lord. They meet Alex, Brother Alex and them, and Brother Paul. They've been meeting on Sunday morning, Sunday night, Wednesday night, and then Saturday is their youth practice where they practice singing. And like I said, they'll sing and sing, they'll learn. I made them a deal. You sing as long as you want, as long as I can preach, as long as God lets me, and they will hold to that, and they're hanging on to every word. Amen. I didn't see nobody, listen, filing their fingernails like I see here. We're done. We've been here for an hour and a half, and we're just done. And, and, I'm, and I'm that way. I'm a product of America, of, of that impatient. Let's hurry up. Let's get done because we're losing them. Friends, we know when we've lost them. Preachers know when you lost them. I about lost you now, haven't I? I'm just teasing you. Amen. Amen. But we love you. Amen. I love the Lord. I love what he does. Amen. He's amazing. He sure is. Don't sell him short. He, he's a God with all power Amen. in heaven and earth. Amen. If we would treat him more such, I think we'd see more results. Because he is God. Amen. This is what the Lord gave me. I want to thank Old Union. They have been, a, this school and Old Union Church and the Missions Conference have been a blessing to my life. Amen. Some of the brethren have already gone on. I started here 35 years ago. And, and a few of the teachers have already went to be with the Lord. Amen. There's others that we don't know how much longer they'll be here, which we don't know how, any of us how long, but by nature, we have some teachers that might not be here, some that used to teach that's unable anymore. I want to say publicly, I thank you. Amen. I love you. Amen. And you've been a help to me. And I pray this goes on. I'm so encouraged by this next crop, Amen. if you will. These young people come up here sing, and these, I look out through here, and it's not a bunch of white-haired people like me. Some of us are. Some of us are bald people like me, too. But look at all the young people. Amen. Friends, Satan wants to discourage us and say there ain't no hope. I'm telling you there's hope with Jesus. Amen. These young people, don't, don't discourage them. Amen. Encourage them. Amen. God can use them in a mighty way. And we, we need your prayers in Belize. 
Uh, I have a desire to see all of Belize saved. I have a desire to see many churches established in Belize, all over Belize. And half the members of the church aren't from that village. When I went there, the Lord showed me, I thought I was going to go, you know, from village to village and do some revivals and stuff. And God, I got there and God said, you go to that community center and you start holding service, you stay right there. We started carrying people on vans and, and renting a van and did, we got enough to get up to buy a bus. It's 40 something passenger bus and they'll put 60, 70 people on a 40 passenger and fill up my 14 passenger van. I had 21 in there one night. And they don't mind. They'll sit on each other's laps. They'll, they'll scrunch in, sit on the floor, whatever they got to do to get to church. And these people won't have any other way to get there. There's public transportation, but it doesn't, none of them have the money to be riding the bus to church every three times a week. So I want to tell you it's a great blessing that the Lord is providing through the Lord's churches and Amen. individuals Amen. is providing for those people to get to church. Amen. And I want to thank you tonight. There's many churches represented here and individuals that have been a great help to the work and we couldn't do it without. It's a, it's a, a group effort. Yep. The Lord is doing the work and he's, he's prompting churches and people to do their part as, as the Lord moves and he's prompting preachers to come down and organize the church and call the pastor. This happens to be my son. I didn't feel like somebody come to me and said, are you upset they didn't call you? I said, absolutely not. That wasn't my burden. My burden is to go do some more mission work and let's see, get more people saved Amen. and let's Amen. I hope there's more churches established Amen. that's my burden but I need need help other brothers have come to me even this week and said I want to help I want to come down I want to, to help that's a blessing Amen. if you get a chance to come down and you're interested you let us know it's, I believe it would be a good trip Amen. for you you come down and help us, and they'll help you. Amen. The Lord, they're a blessing. Amen. But I think I'm done.